Okay, let's get started. Hi, I'm Bill. I'm a beginner. And if this is the first time dropping into the channel, welcome. Uh, the purpose of this video is really to answer a question that came up from Andrew in Ottawa, Canada. Uh, Andrew happened to see my Duh, I Forgot the Moon video. Uh, and he asked the following question. I'm going to read it. He says, can you share details on the laptop you were using and the software you were using along with uh, controlling the telescope, etc. Thanks. So I thought that's a real good question, and um, I thought it might not only benefit Andrew, but others who may be following along, uh, in particular on my M31 Andromeda Galaxy project, uh, to bring everyone up to date with what my end-to-end -end environment looks like. So to that point, I'm going to put a link in the uh, description field which will take you to my M31 project plan and there you will get a list of the hardware side uh, of the mount, the telescope and everything you see there kind of on the left and then this video will cover the laptop and the software that sits on top of the laptop that I use to conduct uh, a night of imaging. Um, and quickly here, here is my setup uh, at uh, Goat Mountain Astronomical Research Station in uh, Landers, California. Um, I'm about to remote desktop into my laptop to show you uh, the software and everything, but when I am down in GMARS, I don't remote desktop into my um, laptop. Any of the tasks that are manual that I have to perform along the course of the night I do right from that uh, chair there. Fortunately, Nina has enabled me to achieve a high degree of automation as a, be as a beginner, uh, so there's not a lot of uh, manual tasks. Okay, so let's, um, let's go in to uh, here. So here is my HP Spectre 360 laptop desktop view. And uh, just a little bit about it. I don't think there's anything special about the uh, laptop. It is what I happen to have. So I uh, used it. Um, and uh, there's a couple pluses and minuses that I'll go into. But first, let's cover uh, its configuration. So basically, it is a uh, I run Windows 10 Pro. Um, clearly, there's a range of laptops, devices, operating systems that you can use to do astronomical imaging. Um, I encourage you to uh, check them all out, but uh, oftentimes um, my feeling is whatever you have is what you have, so use it. I happen to have this, and so that's what I'm using. There may be something better, more efficient, and you know I'm familiar with Linux and its variations, and I'm not adverse to it, but I just happen to have Windows, so that's what I'm using. Uh, i7, uh, four cores, eight logical processors. There is nothing that I have seen in the course of imaging during a night uh, that is so compute intensive that it has caused my laptop, as configured here, uh, with 16 gigs of physical uh, RAM uh, to hesitate or, or lag or anything. So um, this configuration uh, seems to be working for the software uh, that I've selected to uh, use during the course of the night imaging. On the drive side, it's only a 500 uh, gig drive, uh, and it is a conventional uh, hard drive, not an SSD. Um, while maybe I'd like more uh, drive space, what I have is not an issue. And then what I do is at the end of the night, I uh, copy the data off the laptop onto a one terabyte uh, drive that I carry with me, my traveler, so that I've got my data backed up uh, onto a second device if, if the laptop or something should fail. Um, so what I don't like about the laptop, it has one USB 2 port, but still that works out okay because I use the Pegasus Astro uh, Pocket power box advance it's a hub it has it's a hub for usb as well as power i'll put when i get to the uh, 
that part uh, of the software, I'll put a couple of images of what the hub looks like. So that works out for me. Uh, what I do like about it, the HP Spectre 360, I was able to find a 12 volt DC charging cable so I can plug uh, my uh, this laptop into my smaller Jackery Explorer 240 power station. I can use the DC port, the 12 volt DC port, and I can avoid using the inverter side of the power station. And as you probably know, uh, when you have a power station and you use the inverter side, the inverter itself needs some energy uh, to operate. So um, I think that's the key plus and minus uh, on, on the laptop. All right, when I start the night, um, I start with uh, this piece of software. It's, uh, I have a uh, QHY Pole Master. Uh, every night when I start the night, I do a polar alignment. Now, there are many ways to do polar alignments. And actually, before I put this uh, Pole Master onto my Skywatcher HEQ5 Pro mount, uh, I, it had a facility for me to look through and uh, accomplish a polar alignment manually. Uh, some people uh, use... Uh, ASTAP, ASTAP, or I'm not quite sure how to say it, but uh, it, it has there's it has a way to use multiple targets in the sky to do a polar alignment. Um, but with the Pole Master being in the northern hemisphere, uh, it's pretty straightforward. I use the uh, I use Polaris uh, as the uh, key star in in the alignment to get a, an alignment. So it takes me about um, ten minutes at night. To go through the routine, and when I'm down at GMARS, um, so uh, since I set up once at the site and I don't move this, my when I come back the next night, it's really quick uh, to do the uh, the polar alignment. All right, so that's how I start every night. Um, I used to use Carts uh, Do Seal. It's a planetarium software package. It has a repository of uh, objects uh, in the sky. Uh, you can connect your telescope to it. You can slew uh, to a target like M31 Andromeda, and it'll move uh, your um, mount for you. Um, I have deprecated its use. I still have it on my laptop. Uh, but what I have found uh, real quickly is in Nina, and we'll come back to this, there is a repository of uh, objects that I can search upon, and then once it finds the target, I can slew to it, I can add the target to the imaging sequence, uh, so it's a little bit more feature-rich for me than Carts Do Seal, and there may be a case where something may not be in the uh, sky atlas uh, that might be in Carts Do Seal. So I'm just keeping Carts Do Seal uh, on my desktop or my laptop, but I, I don't use it anymore. Um, then uh, what else do we have here? Uh, so something I use at night is uh, PhD2 guiding. Um, guiding is a method whereby uh, at the end of the day, you have a guide scope, and the guide scope has a camera. You kind of center and slew to your target. Uh, then you start guiding. It selects. A, I'm simplifying here, but it selects a guide star, and uh, once it's on the guide star, then it'll track that guide star, and it'll send little uh, uh, signals to your mount. Uh, to make adjustments uh, during the course of the night as it's tracking uh, that guide star. And if it's properly tracking the guide star, then it's properly tracking your uh, target. Um, so that's that. And then uh, I think we're gonna, we'll are gonna go into Nina. And uh, I'm going to do a separate video from a beginner's perspective, me, on why I like Nina and why it's now my software of choice for controlling my camera, my filter wheel, my electronic autofocuser. Just briefly about autofocusing. It's the cat's meow. It's worth its weight in gold. 
It has uh, really enabled me to automate uh, activity at night and uh, cover those uh, situations where temperature variations may uh, change something in my imaging train and my scope and camera. Everything is a little bit out of focus. Uh, it's, a, it's for $199 and a little bit of effort on my part. Uh, I am so happy I, I, I went in that direction uh, and uh, maybe I'll do a video on that in the future. So, uh, and then I also have a flat panel that I use to create flats and uh, flat darks. That's part of the calibration uh, process I'm about to do. My second recommended video to, uh, to beginners, and it's a video by Adam Block, and it's where he goes into detail on the importance of calibration, what the various calibration frames are, and why you should do calibration. So I'll, I'll be... Uh, putting that in my uh, recommended uh, video playlist here over the next, uh, in a few days, within a few days. And then finally, uh, Nina controls my telescope. Now it says telescope, but really the communication is happening between my HEQ5, my Skywatcher HEQ5 Pro German equatorial mount, which really my telescope sits on top. Uh, but that, uh, German equatorial mount is what positions uh, the telescope during the course of the night. And so, uh, and when I attach my uh, telescope, which is essentially my mount, it loads up this uh, driver. And I'm probably not referring to this as the, uh, in the right way, but it's uh, EQ mod is part of the ASCOM package, I think. So, uh, maybe I'll dig into a, that a little bit more in the future. But when I wanted to replace the hand controller that comes with my HEQ5 Pro mount so I could automate its operation through Nina or another software package, I had to load these drivers. And I think this is the layer that uh, talks between the lower level uh, in the mount uh, with the... Nina. So it is the layer by which that communication occurs uh, between this software package and even Carts to Seal and other software packages and the actual lower level language that's uh, part of the German equatorial mount. So um, that's uh, kind of um, uh, how I not how I, but that it, these are the pieces of software that I uh, use to control an imaging uh, session uh, during the course of the night. Uh, I will uh, start to dig into this more and share with you the different uh, facilities that I use within Nina and how I use them. Again, always uh, trying to reveal to uh, beginners, but also to more experienced people, how I'm doing it, so that maybe the more experienced people who happen to drop into the channel uh, see something I'm doing that maybe there's a better way for me to do it, and then they share that uh, knowledge nugget with me, and then if other beginners are uh, reading the comments, then you benefit from that uh, knowledge nugget as well. But it's a fabulous piece of uh, software, Nighttime Imaging and Astronomy. Um, and I do want to point out that I am using what's called the Nightly Builds. So if you go to the Nina site, um, you will see that there's kind of the released packages uh, and very good support with documentation. But then there are the Nighttime Builds. And these are uh, previews of features and changes that they're making to Nina uh, that will get incorporated, or I would imagine if they're bug free and everything, will eventually get incorporated into uh, a new release of uh, Nina. So I'm on uh, 1.11 1 and nightly build 160. So my process is when I go out to image next time, which should be around the uh, the end of this month, end of October. Today is uh, the 17th of October in 2021. Uh, I will check and see if there's a new nightly build, and then I will um, 
I will download it. So, um, Andrew uh, and others, uh, hopefully this information has been helpful. Uh, it'll enable you to understand the complete environment that I'm working with. Again, I'll put a link to the uh, M31 project plan in the uh, description field for this video. So you can click on it and go to the tab that has my complete hardware list. And now you know uh, my complete, complete environment. So um, if anytime you're watching any of my videos and you may have a question or you'd like me to cover something, uh, I'll be happy to cover it if it's within my current knowledge level. Uh, I'll be happy to do so, so don't hesitate. Uh, as always, it's questions and comments that really help drive channels, and I appreciate anyone who takes the time to give feedback or ask a question or say, hey, there's a better way to do it. Um, those are really valuable when that happens. So, Okay, if you like this kind of content, uh, please give it a thumbs up as always uh, like share and subscribe hopefully this video made sense uh, I don't really rehearse anything uh, so occasionally I may misspeak and it's important to keep in mind that I am a beginner I'm not making any recommendations as such I'm sharing with you other beginners uh, primarily what I have Put together as far as hardware and software that enables me to successfully image through the night as you're finding out if you're sticking your toe in the water there are so many things uh, that you need to be uh, aware of uh, but you got to start somewhere and what generally happens is you start to create islands of knowledge and over time whether it be through comments of more experienced viewers giving feedback uh, to my videos and you're reading those comments you start to build the land bridges in between those islands of knowledge and it starts to come together uh, the key thing it's a heck of a lot of fun uh, so uh, I want to wish everybody clear skies wherever you may be in the world thank you for dropping in uh, to uh, the channel till next time